I, I had this epiphany and this, this revelation of that I was preaching, sitting down, you guys remained standing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that way you're not sitting down and standing up, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Look, he's looking at me all serious. Are you serious? <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, um, I'm going to share something uh, very quickly. You can, you can choose to sit down or stand up. But uh, when Pastor Larry asked me, um, he actually said, hey, I'm going to be doing a series um, for Father's Day, and I want the men to preach. I'm like, awesome. And he's like, would you like to preach? And I was like, yeah, why not? Actually, I was excited. I was excited to preach. I'm like, okay, why not? You know, some people might say, okay, no, I don't want to preach, but I was excited. And, you know, as we're walking to his office, he has, you know, the, the sermons or the series for each month, and, and he's showing it to me, and it's, the, the series is I Do, and for the month of June. And at the same time as he's showing me this, you know, my mind starts kind of fading out, and he's talking, you know. Some people call that, um, um, what is it? Um, no, 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 my mind, my mind started fading now. But anyways, um, ADD, <laughs> attention deficit disorder. <laughs> so he's talking to me, and, and, you know, and right there the enemy starts coming in, and he's like saying, no, you're not a preacher. You, you may be able to exhort but, you know, you weren't called to be a preacher. And, and all of a sudden, I'm, you know, he's putting this, this doubt in my mind. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm not a preacher. And, and, and at the moment, you know, I kind of come back. And he's like, hey, you know, we're going to share on this. So I'm kind of focusing on what we're going to share. And he shows, you know, the, the, the four series. He says, you can't use this one because somebody already took that one. You know, that's our, our fourth speaker. You know, we're going to be preaching on I do what, what I am and I do what I see. I do what I hear and I do what I feel. But I wasn't really thinking of the topic at that moment. But Jeremiah kind of caught my eye. And, and I'm looking at Jeremiah, and I'm like, you know, I kind of like that verse. And it happens to be the first series. And then I'm thinking, wait, I'm going to open up the series as well? <laughs> so um, actually, Angel opened up the series. And he did an amazing job, you know. <laughs> to God be the glory for that. And, and actually, he, I think he's, he's a natural because he didn't want to let go of the microphone this morning, you know. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, hey, Angel. I told him when he was walking, do you want to preach and I'll translate if you want for the second service? <laughs> you know? But amen. I mean, I mean, God used them and, and he, he has a gift and, it, you know, it just needs to cultivate that. But, uh, you know, God is good. God is good. Um, I'm going to be reading uh, from Jeremiah 79. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Pastora called me last night because. Um, my mom's been in the hospital. Um, she had a minor heart attack on Wednesday. And, and you know, I was kind of excited because I'm like, she's going to be here today. But um, I know that she's, she's watching online. And, and, you know, I just pray that the Lord just fills that hospital with the presence of God. Yeah. And, and, and for those who are also watching online, I pray that the Lord also fills the room with the presence of God this morning. Uh, because I know that the Lord is going to do something today. He's going to continue to do something and, and I'm, again, I'm going to be reading Jeremiah 79, but, you know, Pastora is, is you know, she's t asking me, you know, how's my mom doing and, you know, what's going on. And, and I actually got together with Angel yesterday, you know, to kind of share our sermons, you know, kind of going through it. And, and, you know, he left. And, you know, I still, you know, although I prepared for a couple of months, you know, I, then, then, you know, I met with Pastor. and He's like, no, 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 that's not really what I want you to share. Mom. <laughs> so there goes my whole, you know, my whole study, like right to the train. And, you know, I'm like. Well, I want to do what I want, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, he has a vision, right? You know, I'm not even thinking, well, how, why does he have us preach on Father's Day when the women should probably be preaching on Father's Day and the men probably be preaching on Mother's Day? But ultimately, he has a vision and there's a reason and a purpose why the Lord um, uses him and, and tells us what, what we need to do. But, uh, you know, Pastor is asking me, how, you know, how's it, how's it going? I ask about my mom, and I'm like, you know, and he, even last night, I, I still wasn't feeling it. You know, I'm like, Lord, what's going on? You know, if I'm going to preach, I, I, I need to feel your presence. I need to feel you, Lord. And I, I know that you're going to use me, but I need to feel your presence. And I ended up going to sleep about 2 in the morning and, you know, tweak my, my sermon again. Then I woke up at 5.30 in the morning. You know, I mean, I get a three-hour nap. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All I need is a little nap. And... And then I, I, again, you know, I'm like, Lord, you know, I, and I started going, I started tweaking, and all of a sudden I just felt, boom, the presence of God. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm in. You know, I, I know that you're going to do something this morning. I just felt his presence, and, you know, I started changing things around, and, and I'm like, Lord, you're going to do something this morning, and we're going to go deep, 
deep to the root of the issue this morning. And, and, and that's where we need to go. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we have problems and we have situations, but we don't get down to the issue. Jeremiah um, 79 says, if you can open up your Bibles, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Let us pray. Father, Lord Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you first of all this morning, Lord Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be used, Father, to be a vessel this morning, Lord Jesus. Father, I just pray, Father, that every word that just comes out of my mouth, Father, that penetrates your people's heart, Lord Jesus. Father, because every word is going to be your word, Father. I'm, I'm just an instrument, Lord Jesus. Father, for those who are watching on live stream, Father, Lord Jesus, that you also pierce their heart, Lord Jesus. Father, fill your room. Father, fill this place with your presence, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask for these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book, Dr. Jacko and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jacko says, of the two natures that contended in the field of my consciousness, even if I could be rightly said to be either, it was only because I was radically both. Now, if you think about this, there are times, depending on what you feel, you will be led to do something you didn't want to do, but yet you still do it, knowing it's not right. Tell the person next to you, I do what I feel. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to start. <laughs> I want to start um, at the beginning of chapter 17.1, Jeremiah 17.1. And the word of the Lord says, and, and, and this is God speaking to the people through Jeremiah. For those who don't know Jeremiah, actually, I kind of learned a little bit more about Jeremiah. And it, it, it just happens to be that Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. And Andrew actually this morning said, I, I can see why um, Pastor Larry gave me this <laughs> sermon, because <laughs> he does like to weep. <laughs> um, but he was, he, he was known as a weeping prophet. And he, he actually hurt for the people. I mean, he was actually, he was right there and he was feeling what his people were going through, right? Yeah. I mean, he was right there in the midst of everything along with God. And God was guiding him and he's like, speak to these people. And, and the, the Lord was using him. He was using him mightily. And verse 17 says, <clears throat> The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. With the point of a diamond, it is engraved on the tablet of their heart. And on the horns of your altars, while the children remember their altars and their wooden images, by the green tree on the high hills, O my mountain in the field, I will give you I will give as plunder your wealth, all your treasures, and all your high places of sin within all your borders. And you, even yourself, shall let go of the heritage which I gave you. And I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Now, as I'm looking at this verse... The last, the, the, the last uh, part here. God is also expressing his feelings, right? I mean, he's angry. And, and at that time, he's angry, but he's, he's angry because he cares for his people. I mean, he wants, to, he wants to put him in the right direction, right? He wants to put him on track. And it says, you have kindled my fire, which shall burn forever. And you start thinking, what is, it, what is he talking about? I, you know, I got this thing, I'm like, is he talking about hell? You know, I mean, that fire where we're going to go if we don't get right with God, if we don't repent. I mean, because there is a hell, right? I mean, there, there is a hell. Just like there is heaven, there is a hell. So, the people were being consumed by the enemy. I mean, for everything that we do... The things that we are not right with God. I mean, we are being consumed. There's so many things in the world that consumes us, right? God, God does what he feels out of love and for, for you and me because he is so merciful. He is so loving, right? He's so loving 
that he gave his only son for our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. It is out of the, it is out of the love that he's speaking to us this morning. Now, some of us, or some of you as well, I mean, I, I can be right there with you guys. We continue to be stuck in your situations, or you continue to be stuck in your situations because you haven't dealt with the issue. Let, let me repeat that. Some of you continue to be stuck in your situations. I didn't say situation, situations, because you haven't dealt with the issue. The issue is that thing that's rooted, that's rooted deep down, right? Right? And we need to start dealing with the issue so that we can get rid of our situations. Because that issue is causing all these problems, right? Now, if you think about it, unforgiveness can lead to anger, and anger can lead to hatred. So it starts building up from there. Depression can lead to alcoholism, and alcoholism can lead to health issues, right? So, and adultery can lead to divorce, which can lead to a fatherless child. Now a seed, a new seed, a bad seed has been planted into that child. So you see how our, our, our issue gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Because of that issue, our situations start growing. Now the fatherless child is confused because he has no guidance. And he's going to take that. As he grows, and now he has a situation or more problems, right? So we have to take care of our issues. Find a man's, find a man's treasure map, and you have found the highway to his heart. It is out of the heart that the issue, issues of life flows, Right? From the heart, that's where everything flows through. Because I do what I feel. Tell the person next to you, I do what I feel. Let me tell you, God has a plan for you. And sometimes we get away from that plan or we deviate from that plan because we tend to do what we feel. We, we, get, we let our emotions get involved, right? Right? But let me tell you, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. is right here. He's telling you he has plans to prosper each and every one of you. Right? I mean, he's so merciful. He's such a loving God that no matter what we do, because Jesus gave us direct connection to him, right? And he died on the, on the cross for our sins. So we are able to come to God. And he helps us to get on track. Right? God is a loving God. Let, let, let me remind you that it's not God that puts us in the situations. We put ourselves in our own situations. Not God. Now, a lot of times we tend to blame God when we should be blaming the devil. Because it says in the word that the, babe, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Not Jesus. Not God, right? And a lot of times we put our blame on him. Lord, well, how come you're not answering my prayers? Let me tell you, I've been praying for years and years for some things and for other people. And you wonder, Lord, well, how come you're not answering my prayers? But the only person that knows that, even for that person that you are praying for, they know why some of those prayers are not being answered. Here you're struggling with God, right? Because you continue to pray for that person. I mean, you try and intercede, but the Lord needs to work with that person before he takes him to the next level, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Move a little fast here. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So as we continue to move on, Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Thus says the Lord, Curse is the man who trusts in man and makes the flesh his strength, whose hearts depart from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. 
Now, this kind of takes me back to Moses. If you think about Moses, God had a plan for him, right? Now, he didn't enter the promised land. Because as, as he's taking his people out of Egypt, I mean, people started complaining. And sometimes we do that. You know, we start complaining. And, and his people are complaining, saying, you know, we're in the desert. We don't have any food. We don't have any water. I mean, they're, they're complaining throughout the whole journey. And if you think about it, from Egypt over to the promised land was only about 240 miles, maybe like from here to maybe just right before St. Louis. So they weren't going a long way. I mean, they could have traveled a mile a day and made it in there within a year, right? But sometimes the things that we do deviates from the plans that God has for us because we go what our, we are doing what our heart feels. So as, as, as Moses is, is, is taking his people, I mean, he also gets angry. And the Lord tells him, he goes to the Lord and he says, Lord, you know, people, what, what do I do? You know, I mean, they need water, they need something to drink. And he tells them, I want you to speak to the rock. So Moses goes down and he, sp- he actually, instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the, the rock twice. So that angered the Lord. Now, as, as he strikes, I mean, two things happen right there. As he strikes the rock, now, not only does he not speak to it, but he doesn't obey what the Lord tells him to do. Right? I mean, he says, speak to the rock. And then he takes credit for, for getting water out of the rock, right? <laughs> Sometimes we tend to do that. We tend to take credit for, for, for what God is doing. <clears throat> so we need to stop trusting our own strength and start tr- trusting in the strength of God. Because we need to start trusting in the creator instead of the creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So as, as you're going through, through some situations through your life, and as, 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 you're, as, as you're going through, through any circumstance, again, we, we need to get down to the root, to the root. See, so many people have so many issues, and we, get, we need to go deep, deep down inside. Now I'm going to be reading from 17.7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear when when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. And will not be anxious in the year of drought. Nor I will cease from yielding fruit. Now if, if you look at this it says. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear. So the Lord is saying. We need to spread out. We need to reach out to him because he is the living water, right? So if we stay close to him, if we stay near him, he is going to give us that living water that we need whenever we're going through a situation. And the Lord is saying, if you put your trust in me, you need to come into my presence now I am going to take you out of that drug addiction. Now I am going to take you out of that depression. I will take care of your finance. I will help you deal with your issues. Right? Hallelujah. You know, as, as um, I mentioned that my, my mom was in the, in the hospital. She is in the hospital. On Wednesday I went over there. And, and she had a minor heart attack. And... Um, I went to see her on Thursday, and I was there pretty much all day. And then on Friday, I was there. I kind of left early, and I was there from maybe like from 2 o'clock to about 10 p.m. And, you know, I'm kind of like talking to her. Actually, we, we had some alone time. I mean, um, and the doctors, you know, they're coming over, and they're, and they're telling, you know, they're telling, you, they're telling me, you know, she had a minor heart attack. Cause she, you know, she's been battling uh, cancer for about six years now. And she's actually 80 years old. But, you know, she's strong-willed, and, and she's a fighter, and, and the doctors are saying, yeah, you know, she's, you know, I mean, she, she's very positive, you know, she, and, and, you know, and I'm listening to the doctor and they're, they're saying, you know, if um, we do, because she has some blocked arteries, it's, they're like, if we do an angiogram and we put the dye in her up to find out which arteries are plugged or clogged, um, that's going to cause her livers to shut down because her livers are only at about 18%. So, 
if we do the dye, that means that her livers are shut down, and now she has to go on dialysis. So I'm here, I'm thinking, wait a second, you know, she's going through chemo, she has a heart condition, and now, you know, she's going to go through dialysis. And, and I'm thinking, you know, I mean, who wants to really li live that life, you know? I mean, I I even myself, I, I, I tell my wife, and, you know, it's not that I'm being selfish, and there's some people that actually battle through some sickness, but... I'm like, I told my wife, if I get any type of sickness, you know, I, like, like that, you know, I, I don't want to do any chemo. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of at my age where I'm at, you know. I mean, if, if, the God, if God, you know, he's, he's going to have to heal me. I mean, I, I know that, 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 you know, if he has a plan for it, he's going to have to heal me because, you know, I, I, I don't want to go through that. I mean, if you're young or if you're, if, you're, if you're a mom, I can see that you're fighting for your children. And, and that's, that's, I mean, this is my opinion, you know. I mean, you know, my children will be taken care of. And my wife was kind of like, well, you're kind of being a little selfish. And then she kind of changed. I'm like, yeah, you know, I feel the same way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I feel the same way. And, and, you know, I'm thinking about my mom at this moment. And, and I'm seeing her. She's kind of slept most of the time. And, and I'm looking at her. And, and, you know, I'm thinking of the doctor saying that she's strong, you know. And she's very strong-willed. But I wanted to ask her a question. And I was afraid to ask her this question. And it's funny because, you know, it's, it's, you know, I was thinking in my mind, I was like, Mom, are you afraid to die? You know, because sometimes we're not prepared. And that's what keeps us fighting, you know, because we are not prepared. We're not ready. I mean, if the Lord would come today, would you be ready? That's the question that we got to ask ourselves. We got to be ready. At, at, I mean, he's going to come at any time. We don't even know when he's going to come. So I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm saying, you know, I'm like, I want to ask her. I'm like, Mom, are you ready? You know, because as her son, I want to know that, you know, she's going to go to heaven as well, right? And, and I want to ask her, I'm like, Mama, you know, and, but I was afraid to ask her, you know, as she's sleeping there. And, you know, is, is that, what, what is it that keeps you fighting, you know, especially at that age? You know, you start thinking, what, what, what is it that keeps you fighting? What is it that keeps you going? Uh, and, and I'm, you know, I'm like, Lord, you know, I mean, you know, help, help me through this. And, and, you know, on Monday they're going to do some tests and... They want to see what's going on with her heart, but, and it's interesting, you know, talking about the heart, <laughs> but, well, no, no, I mean, I'm talking about physically, not, not, not uh, spiritually, but I was thinking spiritually, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, they want to do some more tests, and, and, you know, we're going to get the results. I mean, they say they have to do surgery on her heart. I mean, I don't even know if she can handle, you know, a surgery like that, uh, but, but the thing is that I missed out on that opportunity to tell her, even though I know that she has received God as her personal Savior, you know, I just... I'm like, Mom, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Because she says she doesn't want to do any chemo anymore. You know, I mean, you're going through that every day. And then, you know, you want to have to come back. And, and the thing is that she's, she's, she's so stubborn. You know, the, the doctors told her, you know, after we do your chemo, they do it once a month. You know, you got to stay here and rest. But no, she, she wants to go home and start moving around, you know, even though she's weak. You know, <laughs> I think it kind of reminds me of me. That I, don't, I don't stay still, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I want to keep moving on. So I'm like, I must have got that from my mom. But, um, you know, I love my mom, but, you know, I mean, you also don't want to see somebody who's suffering, right? And then going through some of those things. And that, that's why I tell the Lord, you know, if something, I, I don't want to suffer, I just take, take me in my sleep, you know? I, mean, you know. I don't want to go through any pain. I know that I'm ready to go with you, Lord. I mean, take me today if you have to, you know? But, you know, I, I believe, you know, he has a plan for me. But, you know, but he can take us, you know, pretty much any time. But, you know, I, I missed that opportunity to speak to my mom at that, at that very moment and, you, that kind of stayed with me, but, you know, I, I think I'm going to get that opportunity again to be able to speak to her and say, Mom, it's okay. You know, it's okay. You know, it, you, you can rest, you know, I mean, you know, and she doesn't, I mean, she started, you know, I started crying for the first time, you know, and she was crying a little bit, but, you know, I love my mother. E even though I was raised by my grandmother, you know, my mom is still my mom no matter what, right? I mean, she's the one that gave me life. She's the one that brought me here, you know, I mean. And, and I still love my mom. Sometimes, you know, we, I mean, we don't honor our, our, our parents, right, our father and our mother. But ultimately, they are your, your father and your mother no matter what. And nothing is going to change that, right? Hallelujah. So um, getting back to my sermon here. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, I didn't know if I was actually going to um, close, you know, with, with, um, with this, this verse here. Or I was going to be closing with um, 9 and 10. But... Um, as, as, you know, we keep moving forward here, um, I, I just, you know, just want to say that, you know, we just need to stay close to God. I mean, we just need to continue to seek him, you know, um, and, and, you know, 
make him our priority. I mean, whatever, whatever situation it is that you're going through, you know, I mean, you have to go to deep down and get through that route. I mean, because sometimes we continue to move forward and, and, and you're not going anywhere. You know, we're not moving forward, we're not going anywhere, and it's holding us back for the plans that God has for us. So, um, Jeremiah 9, 9, 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. So, the Lord has given us free will to be able to do what we want, right? Even though he's trying to put us in the right direction, he still gives us that free will to be, you know. But, again, we, we need to draw close to him. Um, in Ezekiel 36, 30, 26, it says, and, and that's where, you know, the, God, where the Lord, he says, although you've been going through some situation, although... You know, you've been doing some things, although you've been sinning, or, or, you know, you need to repent. You need to repent. And it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Come on, how many want a new heart this morning? I mean, see, because some, some of us, we need our hearts to be circumcised, right? And he needs to get in there and just pull that, that heart of stone and give us a new heart. And, and when we need that, and, and, and we need to repent and turn over to our Savior, Jesus Christ, and make him our Lord. Through his spirit, the heart is circumcised, right? I mean, we, we need to surrender. We need to surrender unto the Lord. Um, and going to um, Romans seven fifteen, it says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So, this morning you need to search your hearts. Are you going to decide to give your heart fully unto God? Are you going to decide to fully commit unto the Lord? That's what we got to ask ourselves this morning. You know, because we, can't, we keep going to the situation that addiction... You know, whatever it is that you're going through, we keep going back and back and back. And not only that, but our children are watching. You know, our children are watching us. Every, every move that we make, our children are watching. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, you go to somebody's house and, and they have, you know, liquor or whatever it is. And, you know, they have children and the children are watching this. You know, they, they, they're like sponges. They pick up everything. You know, they, they pick up everything they see. And as they're watching us, you know, they say, oh, a drink here, a drink there is not that bad. And then you wonder when they become teenagers why they're struggling with alcohol, right? You wonder why they're struggling with some of the things because, you know what, we have planted those seeds, you know? Even when it comes to arguing or fighting in your homes, I mean, they pick all that up. And then, you know what, as they become teenagers, they start, they start screaming at us, you know? I mean, everything that we do is, is plant, we, we're planting that seed, that bad, that bad seed. So we need to start planting some good seeds, you know, some good seeds into their lives. But anyways, um, I'm going to be finishing up here. <laughs> I probably closed like three times like Angel did, right? <laughs> Amen. But if we could uh, please stand. So this morning, we just ask the Lord to search our hearts so that we're able to do his plans, right? I want you to close your eyes. And just uh, meditate on the Lord this morning. And have him, well, you, need, you actually need to search your heart because the Lord already knows your heart. But sometimes we don't know our own hearts. So close your eyes and just, just think of the Lord right now and, t and start asking him to work in you. If there's somebody that hasn't received the Lord as their personal Savior, you can raise your hand if you're, if you're here for the first time. Um, if you need prayer, 
um, for whatever it is that you're going through, um, the altar um, will be open. Amen.